Greetings, Earthlings. Welcome to part two of this series of explaining keyword abilities. Now, I know I said I was only going to be doing about 20 per video, but part of the last video and the part one was an actual introduction to this, so I, I may do more? I don't know. We'll just, we'll just kind of go with the flow and see how it goes. So without further ado, this time, let's start with our favorite banding. Introduced in Alpha, banding is a keyword ability with different effects depending on whether the banding creature is attacking or blocking. I made a whole rules video on banding that I'll link in the description. Next, we've got Rampage. Introduced in Legends, and I'm pretty sure it didn't make it that much farther than that. Rampage is a keyword ability that gives an attacking creature a bonus to its power and toughness when it's blocked by more than one creature. Now, on the surface, on the surface, that's kind of a crappy ability, but if you run provoke creatures and other things of the sort and be able to force blocks, eh, you could probably make something like that work. I don't know. Next up, we've got cumulative, I can never say this right, cumulative upkeep. Introduced in Ice Age, Cumulative Upkeep is a, a keyword ability on permanents that require the permanence controller to pay an increasing cost each turn, or else sacrifice that permanent. The cost is based on the number of age counters on the permanent that are put on at the beginning of each upkeep. Next we got Flanking. Introduced in Mirage, Flanking is a keyword ability that gives creatures that block a creature with flanking minus one minus one, unless the blocker also has flanking. If the blocking creature dies as a result of the flanking trigger, the flanking creature is still considered blocked. And if creatures have multiple instances of flanking, they all trigger separately. So they stack. Next we've got phasing. Also introduced in Mirage, phasing is a mechanic where permanents may phase out, causing them to be treated as if they don't exist until they automatically phase back in on their next untap step. This can be a protective action or a means to temporarily disable an opponent's permanents. Unlike similar concepts like flickering, a phased out permanent remains the same object and so retains counters, attachments, and choices made during the life of the object. Next we've got buyback. Introduced in Tempest, buyback is a keyword ability that appears on instants and sorceries. It provides an optional additional cost that the player casting the spell with buyback may pay as they cast it. If the player does, as the spell finishes resolving, the spell card is put back into its owner's hand rather than into the graveyard. It's essentially an additional cost to be able to reuse the spell. Next we've got Shadow. Also introduced in Tempest, Shadow is a keyword ability on creatures that serves as both an evasion ability and a blocking restriction. An attacking creature with Shadow can only be blocked by a defending creature with Shadow, and vice versa. So, yeah, like if you've got a creature with Shadow on the field, and no one else has a Shadow creature, it can't be blocked, but it also can't block anything, so... Next we've got Cycling. Introduced in Urza Saga, cycling is a keyword ability that allows a player to pay a cost that includes discarding the card. When the activated ability resolves, that player draws a card. Simple? <laughs> Next we've got Echo. Also introduced in Urza Saga, Echo is a keyword ability on permanents that requires the permanence controller to pay its Echo cost at the beginning of their next upkeep after they gain control of it or sacrifice it. It's... yeah. It's... Yeah. <laughs> Next, we got Horsemanship. Introduced in Portal 3 Kingdoms, Horsemanship is a keyword ability on creatures that serves as an evasion ability. Similar to Shadow, attacking creatures with Horsemanship cannot be blocked by creatures without Horsemanship. However, creatures with Horsemanship can still block as normal. It's mainly just an attacking ability. Up next, we've got Fading. Introduced in Nemesis, Fading is a keyword ability that limits the number of turns a permanent is on the battlefield. During each of its controller's upkeeps, that player removes one Fade counter from the permanent. If the player cannot remove a Fade counter, they must sacrifice the permanent. It's kind of like reverse cumulative upkeep. Next we've got Kicker. Introduced in Invasion, Kicker is a keyword ability that allows the player to pay an optional cost when casting a spell to achieve an additional effect. There are some cards that have multi-kicker, which you can pay 
the cost more than once to do more the effect more than once. Next we've got Flashback. Introduced in Odyssey, Flashback is a keyword ability on instants and sorceries that allows a player to pay an alternative cost to cast a spell directly from the graveyard. The spell card is exiled when the spell leaves the stack. Next we've got Madness. Introduced in Torment, Madness is a keyword ability on spells that allows a player to cast that spell for an alternate cost if the card is discarded. Unlike Cycling, this is a casting cost and can be countered. Up next we've got Fear. Introduced as a keyword in Onslaught, Fear is a keyword ability found on primarily black creatures. It is an evasion ability that allows a creature to only be blocked by black or artifact creatures. The ability was later rendered obsolete in favor of Intimidate. Up next we've got Morph. Also introduced in Onslaught, Morph is a keyword ability on permanence that allow the player to pay 3 to cast a card with the ability face down as a 2-2 colorless, typeless creature. The player can then turn that creature face up at any time they get cast an instant by paying a variable morph cost printed on each card. Many permanents with morph have an additional trigger abilities that trigger when they are turned face up, and some other permanents trigger when a different card is turned face up. Morphing is a special action and doesn't use a stack. I'll post a link to my priority video to explain that better. Up next we've got Amplify. Introduced in and restricted to legions, Amplify is a keyword ability on creatures that allows a player to reveal creature cards in their hand that share a creature type with the creature. The creature enters the battlefield with a number of plus one plus one counters for each card revealed that way. Some creatures with Amplify have additional abilities tied to them with the number of plus one plus one counters on them. Up next we've got Provoke. Also introduced in Legions, Provoke is a keyword ability on creatures that allow a player to, during their declare attacker step, untap a creature the defending player controls and require that creature to block the attacking creature with Provoke. The block must be legal, so a non-flying creature cannot block a flying creature even when Provoke is used on it. Next we've got Storm. Introduced in Scourge, Storm is a keyword ability that creates a copy of the spell when it's cast for each spell cast before it in the current turn. Storm is well known as a namesake of the Storm Scale, which measures the unlikelihood of a mechanic returning to the standard format because it is considered one of the most broken mechanics ever. And like, yeah, <laughs> it, it is. Next we've got Affinity. Introduced in Mirrodin, Affinity is a keyword ability that reduces the mana cost of a spell by the number of permanents of a certain type that the player controls. The most common affinity types are artifacts. And finally, for part 2, we've got Entwine. Also introduced in Mirrodin, Entwine is a keyword ability appearing on modal instants and sorceries. As you cast a spell with Entwine, if you pay the additional Entwine cost, instead of choosing only one of the modes of the spell, you choose all of them. So, that wraps this part 2 up in our uh, keyword ability series. Uh, if you'd like to follow along and watch these videos as they come out, feel free to like and subscribe. And uh, yeah, without further ado, I bid thee farewell. <laughs>